Hey there, Seb here. Would you like to learn a magic trick? Well, let's move on to another video because I don't know any. I just review games here. However, we do have magic as the theme for today's topic. And none of that phony rabbits out of heads nonsense. Oh no. We're going for the true pyrochondromorphancy stuff. Perhaps sprinkled in with a tiny bit of animation magic, one could say? Well, I hope you have your thinking cap on as we take a look at Merlin's Apprentice on CDI. I told you I was terrible at this. Puzzle games are rather hard to define as a genre, aren't they? There are so many variations, from super simple near brain dead stuff to titles that require a degree in quantum physics to get through. From Tetris to the Dr. Layton games and from Mist to Bejeweled, the genre is quite vast indeed and features some of the most beloved and long lasting game franchises out there. Someone who in my opinion was a real pioneer in successfully transitioning puzzling to a digital form is Cliff Johnson. Not out to just drip feed dopamine to his crazed players, but rather putting them up for a great challenge whilst offering up intriguing settings to keep the player engaged with overarching goals to work towards. Both The Fool's Errand from 1987 and Free and Free from 1989, both for the old Apple microcomputers, are some of the most rewarding puzzle experiences in digital form from that era. At some point, Philips must have gotten wind of this as well and figured that puzzle games would do well on their CDI platform, which, yeah, that actually makes sense. Cliff got the opportunity to work with Philips and the Funhouse Studio was born, which would go on to create three CDI titles, which all did fairly well. We are looking at the second game here. It features 30 puzzles, which is a bit less and none of which are as devious as one might expect from Cliff. However, keep in mind CDI was hitting a different demographic. But don't be fooled, I don't think it's a complete cakewalk either, although not always for the right reasons. In the game you're some nobody who's setting out to prove to Merlin that you can be his next apprentice. In order for him to even notice you, you'll need to complete all of those puzzles. You travel through a forest, a laboratory and finally some deep caverns. Each area features a number of puzzles. Each puzzle you complete grants you an ingredient you'll need to concoct a potion to progress to the next area. Along the way there are also three demons who uh, are there. Uh, yeah, they don't really serve much of a purpose. They just spout out some empty threats now and then. Against us, you are powerless! It is nice however to have some animations to break up the thinking now and then. And the animations do look decent. They have this style that does remind me a bit of animation magic, although I don't think they actually worked on this game. The audio design of the game is rather limited. With next to no music at all and basic sound effects, there's also only one voice actor in the game, which is a bit awkward when there's different characters. But it's not that that is an integral part of the game. We're here to solve some puzzles and those are for the most part presented well enough. There are a few different kinds of puzzles and some work better than others. By far the worst of the bunch are the arcade or action ones. Here you're tasked to just click items as they fly past the screen. And if one escapes it will lower the counter a bit. It's just way too simplistic, lacks any variation and is overall just way too easy as there is basically no challenge. The only puzzling you'll be doing here is guesstimating when you'll finally be done with it. The good thing is that the game controls well enough. And pretty much all input devices are viable as it's basically just a point and click affair. The obvious exception would be the Peacekeeper light gun as there is no way to calibrate it. I must admit it would have been satisfying to shoot down some frogs, but alas, uh, yeah more on those later. Let's instead first look at a puzzle style that actually works much better, which are the logic puzzles where you have to manipulate objects into their correct position, but where each move affects multiple pieces. You know the ones, where you finally get this one piece in its correct position only to discover in by doing so, you've basically messed up the rest of the board. These can be a bit frustrating, but through some logical thinking, usually not too difficult to figure out. And once everything does fall into place, they are quite cathartic. A variation on these are the sliding puzzles, where you slide the pieces using a couple of buttons. I don't know why, but I find these quite difficult to figure out. I think it's because I associate them too much with actual sliding puzzles, but those tactics do not work as the buttons move the pieces at a set pattern, which can differ per puzzle. One of the more unique puzzle types for sure, especially the later ones I found quite challenging. 
And speaking of challenge, the game is very accessible in choosing the difficulty that's right for you. You can set it per puzzle type and you're free to change this whenever you want. Of course, being the big brain man that I am, I had no other option as choosing expert right from the start and I didn't regret it once. Heh, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, even though the game starts out fairly easy even on expert, near the end of the game it gets pretty tough and it had me stumped for a couple of times. However, there was one puzzle type where I just had to lower the difficulty. Yeah, let's talk about them frogs. You see, the memory game they appear in is, uh, well, it's, it's flat out flawed. It's a Simon Says type of game and it starts out easy enough with a sequence of free items and three more get added each time you repeat it correctly. The issue here is that instead of just a couple items to focus on and memorize the sequence of, you get a whole screen full of items, to the point where in the last rendition of this fun activity and the highest difficulty, the game actually expects you to follow a sequence of 33 items in total, which is absolutely ridiculous. Every time you mess up, the game plays the sequence again, and this can be rather slow and can never be skipped, which gets real tedious real fast. And unless you have really good memorization skills, you're bound to mess up a couple of times. If not just from misremembering, then it's probably due to a misclick because of the cluttered nature of the screen. Something else and more of a me thing I guess, but I found this game rather hard to follow at times. Items don't stay lit long enough for me to scan the entire screen and not every item has a unique sound unfortunately, something that would have really helped me. Not something most people will run into I hope, as it got me quite annoyed. My best advice here is to chunk these parts into memory as they appear, so in freeze and not as individual items. And for all that is holy, don't make the mistake of doing it later and shutting off the system, as this will present you with a nice fresh new sequence when you load back in. Yeah, learned that the hard way and this got me quite confused. All puzzles have some variations by the way, though you may run into some repeats on replays. This is most obvious with the word puzzles where you have to solve a cipher, finding the right letters to replace the corresponding runes with. These tend to be quite easy due to the game locking correctly placed vowels. The Wheel of Fortune had you pay for these for a reason is all I say. Even so, these are still quite fun. The final set of normal puzzles you encounter are shape puzzles where you have to fill in a mosaic kind of pane with different shapes, where one of these shapes is always a red herring. I'm not really sure if there's an actual technique to use here, other than using a hammer to help pieces fit better. Yeah, I'm more of a brute force kind of thinking man I suppose. Anyway, it's usually not too long with some good old trial and error to get through these and they can be decent fun to figure out. And finally we come to the overarching puzzles, the potions. As stated previously, each completed puzzle yields you one ingredient and these need to be mixed into a potion to complete the current section of the game. To do this, you'll need to figure out the correct order to mix the ingredients in. The help option actually gives a hint here on which items should be lost. Use these ingredients to create a ruby and then mix it with the berries. These potion puzzles are kinda interesting. I'm honestly not too sure how to explain them well but at some point things do click on how they work and how to figure them out. Although I will admit that for the last one I had to actually resort to some good old pen and paper to get through as it proved too much for my poor old brain to handle in one go. Having to rely on such tools is not a bad thing for a puzzle game in my book, however. And after concocting a final potion, the demon spawn Merlin finally decides to show up himself and have a little battle with those three demons. Totally showing off that exploiting elemental weaknesses is only required for low intelligence nerds and panties who rely on cuddly creatures to do their fighting. Have you learned nothing? You dare to challenge the heat of my flame! I have learned to fight fire with fire! Impossible! And in the end, he knows we exist. I thank you, friend. I am indeed thrice impressed. 
Perhaps you are worthy to be my apprentice. What a reward. Now, what do we do to actually be deemed worthy? Well, probably a lot of chores around the cave, but we'll never find out as the game just ends here. You can freely choose any of the puzzles on the completed file to explore some of the variations. Or you could also just start a new file. I mean, unless your 11 siblings have all started their own separate game already. Jeez, 12 game files, think that's enough? So in conclusion, do I recommend Merlin's Apprentice? Well, both yes and no actually. When strictly looking at the context of CDI, then yeah, this is an easy recommendation to add to your collection for sure. It does what it does well enough and is just a good CDI game. Now I will say that I slightly enjoyed the game that came after this, Labyrinth of Creed, a bit more, but this is still a fun game and Labyrinth of Creed is actually a bit more challenging, so in that regard this is a more casual game and this would actually make a really good game to play with your kids. Now when looking outside of the realm of CDI then I actually don't recommend this game as much. I actually would say do check out Cliff Johnson's other works which are just more fun, more engaging, more original overall and easily accessible nowadays as well. So yeah, um, if you are looking for a fun CDI game to add to your collection this one is definitely worth it. But otherwise, check out Cliff's other stuff, I'd, I'd say, if you're just looking for a puzzle game. And on that note, what kind of puzzle games do you enjoy? Do you fondly remember some from your past? Because I remember playing this one from, uh, when I was young. So yeah, I do fondly remember it. But what about you? Do you enjoy puzzle games at all or none at all? Let me know in the comments down below. Well, that's it for this one. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so very much for watching once again. And you will see me next time. Until then, take care. The Muzzle.